Hi, and welcome to 3dmotive.com. My name is Stephen G. Wells, and I'm a senior character artist. In this little tips and tricks tutorial, we're going to take a look at masking in ZBrush. We're going to use this particular little creature that I created for a mini challenge a couple of years ago. Uh, it's a creature that would actually sit in the skull of a human being, and the eye stalks would, of course, go into where our eyes look so it could see outside. So there'd be no brain inside the, the skull, there'd be this creature. It's a fun little sick creature to create. It was gross, but fun. So we're going to take a look at masking, what we can do with masking in this particular model. I'm going to go ahead, as you can see, it's three different subtools. There's the tongue, there's the teeth, and then there's the body itself. I'm going to go ahead and click this little eyeball to, uh, icon, and that turns off my other subtool. So I have just this one particular subtool. All right. Now I'm also going to turn off the poly painting that I did on this by clicking this little paintbrush icon. If I turn that off, you can now see this is the sculpt uh, that I did for this creature. Uh, well, I didn't get super high resolution. There weren't pores on this particular thing, and there weren't tiny veins and stuff. This was kind of a speed sculpt challenge. Uh, it was a lot of fun, but I'm going to show you what we can do with some of the things with masking for this particular model. So what we can do is to, to mask in ZBrush, all you need to do is, as you can see, I have symmetry on too, by the way, because you can see as I move my cursor across the model, I'm getting a red dot on both sides. And a lot of times when you're working with models, they are going to be symmetrical, so it's good to have symmetry on. To turn symmetry off, I can just hit the X key. See, now as I go to the, right, the, the left-hand side, nothing shows up on the right-hand side. If I turn the X on again, there it is. You can see it's on the right-hand side now as well. But let's go ahead and go for masking. To mask, all you need to do is hold your Control key down and then start uh, painting or, or moving your cursor across the model. Now, all of this area that I'm masking is obviously, that's the delinea delineation area. You can see where it gets darker than everything else. And that is now masked. I cannot sculpt on this at all okay no sculpting on it now if I go outside of the mask of course I can you can see I can easily sculpt around it all right gonna hit control Z to undo that all right now if we want to invert this mask it's very simple hold your control key and just dot in the background you want to invert it again just dot in the background I'm just holding my control key down and I'm just dotting in the background just clicking in the background Okay, that's how you invert. It's very simple, very easy. Uh, if I want to blur this mask, you know, if I wanted to have a hard edge on this thing, let's say, you know, I'm doing this, I'm just sculpting this out, and I want a semi-hard edge. Okay, great. Well, I've got my hard edge. But let's say I wanted to actually blur this. To blur a mask, again, you hold your control key down and just click on the mask itself and click again. See how the, that blurred that edge there? And it blurred it again. Now it's a much softer, and it is, you can see, it's a much softer sculpt as I go through that. Right? Now, if you want to affect a, a larger area, obviously this, this is the high poly version. If I hold Shift D, I can drop down to a lower poly count. I can Shift D all the way down to the uh, lowest uh, iteration. If I hold my control key down to blur this mask, you can see, boom, it's affected in a much greater area. I can hold my control key and click and blur it again. I can then hit D to go back up in poly count. D, D again. And this time I can affect the high poly, but now in a much softer graded way. See how it's not so hard and everything because I blurred it in one of the lower sub tools. Okay? So that's that's a really handy feature. But let's say uh, let's say I'm going to go ahead and clear the, the 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 mask in order to clear mask, I hold my control key and I just click and drag a rectangle. Any size rectangle, any little space in the background. That clears my mask, okay? In this case, let's go ahead and ma remask an area. I'm going to hold my control key and I'm just going to mask an area. Okay, 
But let's say that that's not as crisp and clean as I would like it. Because you can see there is some blurring on this. You can go down to the mask tab here and there's a sharpen mask. See that? Let's do that again. Control Z. Let's look at that one edge. Check the edge up here. I'll do a sharpen mask. See how sharp that went? And I can sharpen it again. Now it's crisp, it's clear, it's beautiful. You can of course then blur the mask too and re-blur it. And keep you can continue re-blurring it or continue sharpening it any way you want with that. I'm gonna go ahead and clear the mask again. All right. What you can also do, a lot of times, especially when you're uh, poly painting or when you're even starting to get in some of these details, you can actually do some sculpting via masking as well. In this case, let's say I want to get some more details in, but some soft stuff. I can go ahead and click mask by cavity. I'll change the intensity to say 50 and I'll click mask by cavity. Let's give that a minute. There you go. Now, all of, basically what it did is, is it, it masked all of the valleys and all the peaks were left unmasked. Okay, so that's a really great way to turn around and, and mask in those, those valleys. I can now, of course, hold my control key down. Uh, and I just blurred that really nicely. Now that means I can turn around and come in here and add some sculptural detail, but you can see how it's varying just how much is affected. Only the peaks are being changed and being uh, added to. None of the valleys are, okay? So that comes in really, really handy as you're working on a model. Let's go ahead and hit Control Z, Control Z. The fun thing is, is, is with this blurred mask, I can now, of course, invert that mask by holding my Control key and just clicking in the background. And I can actually do the same. I can hold down my Alt key. I'm on Z add. I can hold down my Alt and that gives me my Z subtract. So I can sculpt in, I can carve in more deeper furrows, as you can see. I can clear my mask and there you go. It's even deeper now. Okay. So there's a lot of things you can do with that, with the masking, even when you're sculpting. I'm going to go ahead and control Z. Let's go ahead and clear the mask. Let's go back to our sub tool and turn on our poly paint. Okay. Now here's where it comes in handy for poly painting. Obviously what we just did for the sculpting is what I, as you can see, what I actually did for poly painting some of this, some of these dark crevices, if you had to paint some of the wrinkles in the skin, it could take you, you know, days to do. Whereas once you have that sculpted detail, you can go into the mask by cavity. Let's say this is, in fact, let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to go ahead and grab, I'm going to give you two extreme colors just so you can see. Let's go ahead and make sure we've got our ZBrush RGB on, turn off our Z ad. We're just going to color in some bright color. I want you to see what's going to happen. All right, so we've got some bright colors painted in. No way to avoid that. You can see that from a mile off. All right, let's go ahead and do a mask by cavity. All right. And control and then click to blur it. All right, let's get a darker color here. And remember, right now, what is masked is our valleys, our, our depressions. So let's go ahead and invert the mask by control clicking in the background. And now let's go ahead and we'll change our, take our intensity down, our RGB intensity down just a little bit. But let's go ahead and start coloring this in. Okay. Let me clear that mask. There you go. A great, easy way to start getting some of your shadows and highlights painted in, etc. In fact, what you can do, let's go ahead and invert our mask. Control and then click in the background to invert that mask. I'm going to go ahead and sharpen it. And for some of these highlights, let's go to something a bit of a yellowish tone. And I'm going to just highlight, I'm going to hit S to change my brush size. I'm going to scale it down my brush size. And now I'm going to add in just some just some highlighting in just certain areas just to give it a little bit of oomph, a little 
a little variation. Help help it sell the fact that there's some highlighting going on. Okay, let's go ahead and clear that mask. So you can see what you can do very easily, very quickly with masking in ZBrush. It's great a great tool for hiding and unhiding certain uh, details that you want to add into. It also can help you augment some of the work you've done and certainly makes uh, poly painting, especially something complex, a whole lot easier when you're getting to mask out the uh, valleys from the peaks. It comes in really handy and uh, I hope this has been fun for you. My name is Stephen G. Wells and this has been 3dmotive.com.